Our first story tonight comes from Arts and Entertainment. Sacramento State's College of Arts and Letters celebrated 10 years of UNITE, a gallery that spotlights art from Sac State professors. Arts and Entertainment reporter Chris Woodard and multimedia reporter Bram Martinez give the story. Hey everyone, this is Arts and Entertainment reporter Chris Woodard, and we're at the Crocker Art Museum for the 10th anniversary of UNITE. UNITE is an annual event from the College of Arts and Letters and Sacramento's Crocker Art Museum to connect artistic talents from campus to the community. The event showcases art, performances, and lectures from Sac State professors. Let's check it out. I'm here with... Misha Young, um, four-year student, um, public relations major. Perfect. And Misha, I know you're a student ambassador here for the event tonight. Uh, talk to us about this event and what it means to the arts department. Um, I, it's 10-year anniversary. It's our first event since COVID. And um, it is, it's all these different arts and letters, not just arts, but it's professors. It means it's a big deal for professors and faculty and students to showcase their work. Yeah. Um, one thing that's unique about this event is that it gets the professors out of the classroom to show their talents uh, in a way that students don't always see them. How do you think that sort of changes the perception that students have about their professors? I think it changed a lot because we see professors as the adult and we look at we look at high. My professor did this and I could do that too, you know, like a basic motivation too. Depends. I'm not really from SAC, I'm from the barriers, so it's pretty big. I was overwhelmed, but I like it. I love it. Um, anything to do with museums, art, culture, I really just enjoy it. Um, I didn't actually realize it was going to be a school and faculty event, so the fact that I'm seeing so many familiar faces and um, just people from the academic setting is just awesome. And uh, do you enjoy seeing the professor's talents outside the classroom? Oh yeah, yeah. Knowing that my professors are good at something other than just teaching and lecturing at us and dealing with a bunch of drunk college kids is always good. Professor Dim, uh, it's gonna for Asian Civilizations History. Um, just been learning about uh, Japanese history, uh, which we're about to go over in about a week or so. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much okay. what the class is for. Are you excited to see your professor kind of showcase his talents outside of the classroom? Um, Actually, yeah. Uh, I always feel like professors are, I've always said that professors are pretty much like real people too. Uh, they're just, they have their own thing going on and it's kind of see. Uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, I feel like it's going to be nice to see my professor speak about something that he's passionate about. Um, I mean, he's teaching the subject on Asian, his, uh, Asian civilization history and I feel like he's passionate about it and interested, what, uh, interested to see what he's going to talk about. I've been to a couple museums already and so far, so uh, I'm seeing a lot of nice things. Uh, just like looking at the art already. Um, uh, never, uh, I'm probably not going to be an artist myself, but I do uh, enjoy a little bit of art myself. Uh, so definitely going to take some of uh, the art in, see where that leads me. This concludes our coverage of Unite. Be sure to check it out next year when it returns. For more arts and entertainment coverage, stay tuned to www.statehornet.com. I'm Chris Woodard. Cheers. Stay up to date on all the art galleries on campus hosted by Sac State by going to the State Hornet website. Our next story comes from arts and entertainment reporter Haley Valdivia and multimedia reporter Gavin Hudson, who went to the Mong Fashion Show on November 14th. Gavin and Haley report the story. Hello Hornets, I'm Haley, a and &E staffer from the State Hornet, and we are here with Project Mong to celebrate the Mong New Year with a cultural fashion show. The fashion show really came from ground up. Uh, each of the models are either alum of the university, current student, or high school student, and you, you also saw uh, some youth. So we want to highlight the change in fashion from China to Southeast Asia to more modern here in America. So you were able to see that shift and change. Uh, first with Hmong Youth Empire United, then culminating with Hill Tribe Fusion. We 
wanted to um, host this whole event for all the staff members, faculty, also the, all the students um, at the universities and the family. This is around the time when we do celebrate um, Hmong New Year. And so we wanted to bring that here. Towards the end, I really enjoyed it the most because I got to see all of the fashion shows and all of the styles that we have now. Um, I just love the creativity that um, they have put together. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> We are a people without a country, so this celebration reminds us of our identity, but also foster a place of belonging for Hmong students, our Hmong parents, and our Hmong community here in Sacramento. I just want to say this event did not have happened without the community. I am a proud first generation Hmong American. I'm a product of Sacramento State as well, so go Hornets, and more importantly, thank you to the community, because we wouldn't be here without you all. Happy Hmong New Year's! <laughs> This has been Haley Valdivia, and that's the Hmong Fashion Show. Back to y'all in the studio. Thank you for that story from Gavin and Haley. Our next story comes from part of our investigations team. On Thursday, November 17th, there was a town hall addressing the four sexual assaults on campus. CSUS President Robert Nelson and Sacramento State Police Chief Chet Madison were in attendance. It was an emotional day for many students who had to share devastating moments of their life in public in the hopes that it might benefit others. Multimedia reporters Christina Mendez and Gavin Hudson give the story. Sexual assaults have been a very big part of my life. Oh, it's been a very big part of my life. It's been a very big part of my life. In terms of Sac State held a student-led town hall addressing the multiple sexual assaults that have been happening on campus. Students voiced their concerns about their safety and wanted to see action from administration. President Nelson said that he heard the students and is hoping to get social workers and police an idea Sac State Police Chief Chet Madison had at his town hall last November. We needed to hear from the students. The students needed to be able to voice what they were feeling. We needed suggestions about what we need to do better. We needed uh, avenues so that we can continue the conversations and everything. What has been happening on campus is difficult. People need to be able to voice it and they need to know that we care but we also need to hear what they said about we need to be proactive. So what do you think the next step the campus is going to take? Well, one of the most important things is hiring the new weave person so that we have two advocates at that point, accompanying people, especially at night, so that there is more of a presence there. We're going to hire someone in the police department who's a social worker so that you don't have to always go to uh, the police to be able to talk. You've got somebody else to be able to talk in the police department. What we heard today was, let's not send everything on sack sends. Let's use social media. Let's make sure that we're talking in different avenues and that. So uh, Student Affairs is doing a series of videos. They're going to do a lot of posts. We're going to do a, lot, a big educational campaign. I heard what they said, okay? I understand the need to be secure, but we know that often what happens is someone will prop a door open and actually get in. So having that security measure doesn't guarantee anything. And you also heard that even at the dorms where we have it, people are still getting around it. We have to do more than just lock down doors. We have to be proactive and make sure that the campus itself is safe. I did hear that people would like us to do that. But I do believe that we need to be an open campus where people can come and go. Do you think it's tougher hearing these stories knowing that you have announced your retirement, I think it was two weeks ago? That's not something I'd thought about. Um, I intend to be here 100% of the time forever. Um, I think it's tough to hear these stories, period. When the students come, and, and some of the students don't like what I'm going to say right now, but I say to their parents, they're not yours anymore, they're mine, okay? And so when I hear one of these stories, it affects me personally, because I do consider these students to be part of the Hornet family.
think it's really important for students to feel heard. And I think this is the first step in the right direction. I mean, I'm a part of a lot of conversations that don't get public publicized, that students don't know about, and I've been advocating for these things, and an event like this just further proves exactly what I've been saying in these meetings, and I really, really appreciate the administration that was here to hear it, because now it's not just from me, now it's from our student body. So now they know that it's not just Selma making these comments, oh, blah, 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 no, it's I'm saying these comments because our students are feeling this. I wanted to make sure that I could see every single person who was in this room, so our next meeting will be the accountability. What are you hoping has been accomplished after today? I'm hoping that we can see tangible things being done. I'm hoping that the dissemination of information of resources increases. I'm hoping that students see the change and are not just being told that we're, we hear you, we support you. No, I want there to be actual change and tangible things that the student body can see and feel safe on our campus. No, I don't feel safe. The other day I was followed and this was from the union all the way to the front parking lot by the Welcome Center. And so if it's happening to me, it's happening to another student, and if I feel unsafe, then other students don't feel safe. We need more information and we need to see what's going on, and not just being told, yeah, we're talking about it, or yeah, we're dealing with it, or seeing a Saxon. There needs to be more tangible evidence of the things that they're doing. Uh, I mean, I had this idea after the second sexual assault. I think one sexual assault is too many, but the fact that the first one hadn't even been properly reported on by the university, you know, we only got the report after the second one came out and but at that point I felt I, you know I felt powerless and by the fourth sexual assault it was just becoming ridiculous I mean that's terrifying you know knowing that only one-third of cases are reported who knows how many actual total cases are on campus right now I'm gonna be honest this event wasn't meant to come up with you know the perfect solution to a, such a complex issue I wasn't expecting that at all and I don't think that can be a solution can be come up with by one person can even come up uh, by ten people I think it again has to be a community effort, uh, an ongoing discussion. You know, even in my role on the Title IX sexual violence awareness team, I'm the sole student representative on a, they're all, it's all faculty on that committee. And for myself to represent every single student on campus on such a sensitive issue, is is not right. But let me just list it off. You know, we've had four sexual assaults. We've had a recording in the bathroom. We've had a, a stabbing of a student. We've had a, a, a you know a misfire in the dorms. Um, so no, no, I don't feel safe. Campus right now isn't the safest place, and that things need to be done and addressed for us to get to that point where campus is safe. I hope that the administrators listened to what the students had to share. I hope that they take the ideas that we provided and implement them, have conversations amongst themselves, and do something actually um, to help these students. If they were to do something, what is something? The, the biggest thing that I think would be the easiest and quickest step would be to improve lighting on campus at night. I honestly thought it was a little ridiculous that the response was we're doing a survey or stu study, some sort of, like some sort of study to figure out where we could best put the lights. Like, just put the lights like you're just wasting more time there's just going to be more things that happen and more people who are harmed when you could just install the lights they don't need to be the statistically best place to put the lights and do you personally feel safe on campus um i'm usually with people on campus and that makes me feel safe and i think that um, that's kind of what our campus has had to resort to is each other as students as support because um, of the slow response from administration. Oftentimes, these people are alone in a dark corner or in a hallway or something. That's when things can get scary and dangerous. Um, in some ways, yeah. I definitely like, I, like I'm gender nonconforming. So, um, but like being a male-bodied person, I think definitely affords me some privilege in the dark of night. Definitely. Um, but there are instances where, because I am gender non-conforming, that does make me feel unsafe. I think that an increased faculty presence on campus, um, that outside of the police, just to keep eyes out and to, to be there for students, um, because often if you can notice that suspicious behavior before it happens or as it's starting to happen, you can prevent the actual event from happening. Yeah, and then how do you feel about President 
Um, that was the one thing, the one pushback from administration that I think I was sympathetic to. Um, I think that there's a lot of value in this campus being a um, public campus. We have uh, many of the cultural communities in Sacramento as such a culturally diverse place that have events in the, here in the Union, um, in, in this specific room, in the ballroom down the hall. Um, and I think that fobbing into the Union would kind of create a, a new host of problems. Um, but I think that the FOB systems in the, as I was talking about, like the FOB systems in the housing structures need to be fixed or the desk attendance system needs to be fixed somehow. That, that should definitely be one of the largest focus is, is the housing issue because there's hundreds of students there in the middle of the night, you know. I talked to the housing uh, professional um, here and he, he didn't seem to be too engaged. I hope he listened, but which was a little disappointing. Um, he did nod and say, okay, yes, blah, 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 blah. My second semester was in Riverview. So I've kind of actually gone through different phases of uh, front desk lockdown. So like my first semester was spring 21. Um, we couldn't have any guests. So that was kind of out of the question. And then the fall, they started to open it up. Um, and it was, it's this very kind of tedious process to register someone to get into a building. First you have to log into your Hornet housing, which you'd never log into otherwise. And then you have to, uh, then you have to do, do duo, and then you have to get the person's first and last name, which may, you probably already know, but you, then you have to get their birthday and their student ID. And there's another number that I can't even remember that you have to get. Um, and it's like a whole 10 minute process just to register someone to get in the building. The desk attendants don't really care as much about the process. And so I, I don't know what changed, but I, I haven't done that process when I'm a guest this semester. I live off campus now, and I haven't had to do that process. I've just walked in with my friends, um, and the reason that I'm just walking in and not going through the process is because it's so tedious. And then even the conversation around, like, most sexual assaults are someone that you know. Like, if it's someone from another hall that's swiped in, you know they're in that building. You can, if someone complains about that person, you could be like, oh, yeah, you were in this building. This is, a, this is something we need to actually address with this person. Or, the conversation aimed at solving this campus danger has begun. Sacramento State students hope next for action and a larger venue for more students to seize the opportunity to speak. For more information on the sexual assaults on campus, visit www.statehornet.com. The breaking news and investigations team have been diligently sifting through reports to make sure the facts are accurate and presented to students concerned about this topic. Stay safe on campus after dark and try to buddy up when possible. There are resources available to students on campus to report to the Title IX office or to Campus PD if you decide to report a crime. Take care of Sac State. This has been the State Hornet Broadcast, student news without fear or favor.